So last week I kind of mentioned that I have a message that uh, has kind of been on my heart for, for a while now, a couple months. And so I want to give you a little bit of the story on how I, how I got, got to where I am. Um, it started in, in Brothers Meeting about two months ago. We were talking about women speaking in church. And I'm not, this is, has nothing to do with the topic I'm talking about today. This is just an example that, that God used to show me something. And we were talking about this, and we probably spent an hour and a half or two hours talking about, you know, the just the intricacies of how that worked and what Scripture said about that. And we got to the end of it, and I started kind of pondering why that was in there. I mean, why why such a detailed little thing or seemingly insignificant thing is in Scripture? And in the New Testament, you notice quite a few of those that Paul addresses in his letters. And so after pondering that for a while, I kind of came to the conclusion that, well, you know, Paul's writing these letters to specific churches or groups of churches, and he's addressing issues that those churches had. He's not necessarily covering all the issues, he's just covering the specific ones that those churches had. Okay, but still, why is that in there? In the big picture of things, why do we have those little rules? Because we're saved by grace, not by works, right? So... Works are really meaningless, so why do we have the rules and guidelines laid out in Scripture if all we need is grace? And so I started kind of looking into that and pondering that, and just asking, do, do those things really even matter? I mean, obviously, they're in there for a reason, because otherwise they wouldn't be in there. So I started looking at this and um, came to a couple of conclusions. First thing, we tend to look at things black and white, and right or wrong. And that's not really how things are laid out in Scripture. That's, that's a religion. That's morality. That's not really how it is as a Christian. And uh, I'll explain that in depth a little later on. But um, the reason we follow those commandments, those, those little things that are in Scripture, is because we love God. Because we love Jesus. We, we see what he's done for us, and so we want to obey him. It's not... Um, something we do to earn anything. It's not something that, it's not like we're, we're saved and God gives us this rule book and it's like you have to live this way because that's how you are a Christian. That's not how it is. How it is, is we accept God's grace and because we love him, we look into his word and we try to know him better and become more like him and those things, those little things in scripture are things that, that align with God's will those things that he desires for us to do, but not out of obligation, but because we love him. And so the point I wanted to make is that as Christians, we're not looking for to do moral things. We're looking to align ourselves with God's will and to draw closer to God. It's about the relationship, not the religion. Um, but beyond that, I guess, the... The next point I want to make is those, those little things in Scripture are not just there because we love God. There's actually a purpose for those, um, and that is to help the body of Christ function properly. Okay, Because in, in eternity, those little things aren't going to matter because we are saved by grace. And so we're, we're still going to sin. Even, even if we, we try to do everything perfectly, we're perfectly moral people, we still sin. And we're still blemished in God's eyes. We are covered by His grace and seen as righteous. Uh, in God's eyes, but in eternity, this life really doesn't matter what we do or don't do. It's whether we're in or out, whether we're saved or not saved. And so I also believe that all those little rules in there are to help us um, function properly as the body of Christ, to interact with each other. But then the question becomes, okay, to what end? What is the body of Christ here to do? And so this is kind of what I want to focus on um, for this message is... What, why are we here? What is our purpose in life? Now that we're saved, boom, what do we do? Okay, so I'm just going to throw this out there. The point of life is God. Because if you start thinking about it, you can look in the, in, uh, Solomon says in, in Ecclesiastes that everything is vain. Everything is vanity apart from God. Because in eternity, God is all there is. None of this will be here. Anything we do Anything, you know, all the fun we have is really not going to matter because after you die, what good is all that stuff do? It's, it's gone. Okay? So the point of life is God. There is no other point for life. 
Um, and because that, our ultimate purpose is to glorify God because life is God. Okay, the, the ultimate purpose is to glorify God, is to worship him, to praise him for who he is, because he is God. Um, because that's the only thing that's worthy in eternity, that he's the only thing that matters, and so that is where our focus should lie. Um, the next point I kind of want to come to is, not only do we worship him and glorify him, um, because of who he is in eternity, but also while we're here on this earth, our purpose specifically on this earth is to be ambassadors for Christ, to be messengers, to be apostles, sent ones is what the word means. We are sent ones, we are sent out, we are here to be the testimony of Christ. Okay, so how we live our lives, who we talk to, how we talk, all of that should be geared towards sharing Christ with others, sharing what Christ has done in our lives to others. Because in eternity, all that really matters is, are you in or are you out? And so that should be our focus, is to get everyone in. Okay? Uh, we are servants of Christ, not of this world. Again, we are our ambassadors for Christ, so our focus shouldn't lie on the things of this world, but on the things of the next world. Um, we're going to go ahead and read a couple of scriptures here. If you would go ahead and open your, your uh, actually, I'm going to go ahead and just read this one, and then we'll, we'll look at a couple others in a minute. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. I just kind of threw that one in there because I wanted to make the point that we are not of this world anymore. We have been taken out of this world, and we are of the next world. We are just here temporarily to be ambassadors for Christ. Now, let's go ahead and turn over to 1 Peter. We'll look at the passage in chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. It says, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Again, we are taken out of this world. We are now God's <coughs> possession. We are now God's people, not the world's people. Another one I'm going to read is uh, Ephesians 2.10. You don't have to turn that. I'm just going to read it real quick. It says, For we are his workmanship created in Christ. The we is Christians. For, for we Christians are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in. A couple more, Philippians 3.20. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, we're not from this world, we're from the next world, we're from God's world. Uh, finally, 2 Corinthians 5.20. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us, we implore you, on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. We are ambassadors for Christ here in this world. That's, that's kind of the point that I wanted to make here, is that we're not of this world. We're just here to be ambassadors, to be witnesses to what God has done, in hopes that others might come to Christ as well. So, with that said, uh, that then begs the question, does that mean that we should be preaching 24-7? Because if all of this is meaningless and our only purpose here is to be ambassadors for Christ, and God is really the only thing that matters in eternity, that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? That we should be preaching 24-7 or worshiping 24-7. And the simple answer is yes, we should be worshiping and preaching 24-7. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to be standing on a street corner, you know, all hours of the night, yelling at the top of your voice, you know, Jesus loves you. That's not what that means. That means you live your life in a way <coughs> that glorifies Christ, that worships Christ. Paul says, be in, uh, be in constant <coughs> prayer. 
uh, prayer is a form of worship. We should just be constantly in that, in that zone of worshiping God, of sharing him with whoever we meet, because that is why we're here, is to be that witness, that ambassador for Christ. Um, let's go ahead and flip over to Romans, there's a passage I want to uh, read here. In Romans chapter 10. <clears throat> Romans chapter 10, I'm going to go ahead and start in verse 13. Paul says, For everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him who they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. And so again, this is our purpose, is to share that gospel with others, because in eternity, that's all that matters, is our relationship with Christ, and whether we are in or out of the game. Um, so with that said, what should our focus then be on? Should it be on preaching and worshiping 24-7? If yes, then what does that mean? I mean, practically, how, how do you apply that to your life? So we're going to look at a couple more scriptures about kind of a focus and, and what that should be on. Colossians 3.2, you don't have to turn there, I'll just read this one. It says, set your minds on the things above, not on the things that are on earth. Again, just pointing your focus right back to God, because he is life. He is all that matters in eternity. Proverbs 4.25, kind of the same thing, says, let your eyes look directly forward and your gaze be straight before you. That's referring to... Focusing on God, okay? Not on things of this life and what, what your next aspiration is, but focusing on God and putting your sights on Him. Uh, Romans, were, since we're already here, let's go ahead and just flip a couple chapters back to Romans 8. Romans 8, 5 says, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For to set the minds on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law, indeed it cannot. For those who are in the flesh cannot please God. If you are of the world, if you are focused on the things of the world, then you're in the flesh. Okay? So we need to be Focus on the things of God, focus on the eternal things, the things that really matter. Uh, one more passage, this is a, a pretty popular one, you guys should all recognize this, Philippians 4.8. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What's interesting about this passage is if you start breaking it down and looking at it, um, again, if you're looking at the eternal, God answers every one of those. God fits into every one of those categories of what is true, honorable, just, pure, lovely, commendable, and excellent. Okay, so God is worthy of our praise and worship 24-7. Um, so, something else I want to bring up that uh, was one of the things that kind of sparked this message off. And that is what our focus shouldn't be on. We've kind of talked about where it should be, that should be on God, but I think we all kind of had an idea of that before. Uh, a couple things I want to address are just the things that I've seen people uh, kind of stumble in as far as what our focus shouldn't be on. And I'm not trying to like bash on you guys, this is stuff that, that I struggle with too, that, that I'm working through. I just want to kind of share with you some of my thoughts on this. Um, one of the big things that has been kind of going around is our country, the direction it's going, and who is in charge of our country. And something I think we need to remember is that, well, first of all, we're not of this world. And if we're not of this world, we shouldn't get so caught up in the politics of it, in how it's working, because that's not our focus. That's not our end goal. 
Another thing we need to remember is that God is in control. He is sovereign. He controls everything. He knows exactly what's going to happen. He put the people in power who are in power for his purposes to accomplish his will. And so we can't then say, God, you don't know what you're doing. This evil person is on the throne. Um, during most of Paul's writings, there was uh, Nero was on the throne of Rome, and he was uh, probably well one of the greatest, the second greatest, I think, persecutor of the Christian church. Okay, and he was still saying to respect the God-given authorities put over the country. And so that's something I think we really need to be aware of: is that we can't lose hope. We can't be focused on what's going on in our country or in the world politics because we need to look beyond that in the scope of the eternal and what God is doing in all of that. Uh, another thing is the end times. This has also been coming up quite a bit. And it's interesting because God tells us to look forward eagerly to the end times, to look forward to Christ's return, and we should definitely do that. But we can't get so caught up in the end times that we neglect what is here in the present, what we should be doing. If anything, the end times, knowing that they are near, should spur us on in the moment to worship harder, to share the gospel more. Because, again, in eternity, all that matters is, are you in or are you out? Are you saved or are you not? Have you accepted God's grace or have you rejected it? And so that should be our goal, not looking forward to the end times that it's an escape for us, but looking forward to it in that we get to spend eternity with God and hopefully bring a whole bunch of people with us, okay? Um, another one I want to kind of bring up, this is, this is an interesting one, uh, is dogma in the church. And basically all that means is difference of opinion. When there's, there's an issue that prevents fellowship between Christians. Um, Glenn always says that we need to agree on the essentials, but have grace in the non-essentials. I think that is very key, especially in this day and age. Um, persecution is something that actually has a way of bringing all the Christians together and having them forget their differences. But in a country like America, where we don't have very much persecution, there isn't really that much of a reason for us to band closely together. So we tend to not really fellowship with those if we have a difference of opinion. You know, we just kind of avoid them, kind of stick with the group that we feel comfortable with. And that's something I think we need to start breaking out of and realize that those small things in light of eternity don't matter. It's the big things, the essentials, are you saved, that matter. And so that's another thing. <clears throat> um, a quote I actually ran across in, in some of my research from a, a, there's this, this group out there that does something called the Colossians Project. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. But uh, a quote they say is, Christianity isn't a formula for living life here. It's hope for gaining life there. And again, this kind of just wraps up what I've kind of been talking about this whole time, is that it's not about here, it's about there. It's not about this world, it's about the next world. And so with that said, we shouldn't be chasing after all the things, all the distractions of this life, we should be focusing on spreading the word on sharing Christ with others and what he has done in our lives because we are ambassadors for Christ. That is the reason we are here in this world. Uh, one more passage I want to read in Romans. Hopefully you still have your Bibles open there. We're going to go ahead and flip over to chapter 12. Chapter 12, verse 2, Paul says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. And so, um, again, this is kind of where this all comes to, is we shouldn't be conformed to, we shouldn't be influenced by what this world has to offer, but we should be focused on uh, the renewing of our mind through the Spirit that we might align ourselves to God's will to do His will. Um, something else I kind of wanted to throw in there that that um, 
God kind of impressed on me a while back was, you might say, well, we run, we run into issues like, well, what if I don't want to preach 24-7? What if I don't want to worship 24-7? That's just not my heart. I want to go do these other things. And um, something God kind of told me, I guess, a while back was, the more we align ourselves with God's will, the more our desires will become His desires. Okay? So, if you start spending a little bit of time with God a day, that desire for Him will start to grow. It will start to birth in you. It's an acquired taste. It's something you have to actually persevere with at first, but eventually it will become a hunger. You can't live without it. And the idea is that you will be transformed. You will be renewed through Jesus Christ, through the Spirit living in you, and that you will become more like Him. And so as you become more like Him, your heart will be aligned to God's heart, and you will want to reach those people. You will have a desperate desire to reach those people, to worship God, and do all these things we've been talking about. And so that's kind of um, where I wanted to go with this. I do have a challenge for you guys this week. I, I'm challenging you to examine your lives and just look at maybe some areas that you may have got distracted by the things of this world, some things that maybe you need to give up in order to spend more time with God. And so that's my challenge for you this week. Um, and also share your life with Christ and others. I mean, even, even fellow Christians, but not just fellow Christians, also those in the workplace, maybe um, any other events you do, if there aren't any areas in your life that you really feel like um, you have an opportunity to do that, maybe you need to look at adding some of those so that you can share Christ with others. Because again, that is our purpose here on this earth, is to be ambassadors for Christ, is to be messengers, to be a testimony of what he has done in our lives and what he can do in their lives. So that's pretty much all I had. Um, we're going to go ahead and pray here. And then I asked uh, Steve if, if um, him and Angie would be willing to come back up and do a song. I don't know if... Did you still want to do that? Okay. They're going to come back up and do Inside Out again because as, as they were singing that up here this morning, I thought that was really relevant to what I was talking about. So just pay attention to the words and, and see what, what that song was really saying. So we're going to go ahead and pray and then uh, they'll do their song and then Matthew is going to wrap up with the um, prayer and announcements. So Father, we just come before you this morning, Lord, and again, I thank you for the opportunity we have to gather here to fellowship together. Father, I ask that you would just continue to work the Spirit in our lives and our hearts, that you would continue to change us, to conform us to what you want us to be, to be more like you. And I ask that we would not be ashamed, that we would not be um, scared to share our faith with others, but that we would be bold in proclaiming the gospel, we would be bold in proclaiming you. And Lord, I also ask that uh, as we go about our daily lives this week, we would worship you with all of our hearts and with our words and our actions, Father. And again, I thank you for everyone gathered here this morning. I ask that you would bless them this afternoon as they go about their business. In your name, amen. amen.
Never.